stoner mind. Hey there, how's it going? Are you good? Why is it snowing? These are the previous speakers that I tested and they are going to be replaced with these. So here we have the model number if you are interested. Oh yeah, by the way, if you want anything from me, send me a picture of it and I'll put it in a video. 450 watts peak power, 60 watts RMS. And the box for these also says 450 watts on it too. But the RMS power on them is 140. Tune for Mega Bass Head Unit. So I tend not to have expectations because when expectations aren't met, you're disappointed. So what I'm expecting with these is probably a little more refinement. Maybe they'll be a little better than the previous speakers. I'm not too sure how they'll compare to the Edge speakers because they actually turned out to be a little better than I expected. So yeah, I would expect these to sound a little better than some of the budget speakers, but I don't know, that's the whole point in this video. We're gonna test them and see. We're nearing the end of these tests. I will maybe get some more speakers and test them. So uh, what I'll do now is I'll open this up and we'll see what these come with. Hopefully no body parts. Wait a second. Can't even open it from this side. Okay, so we've got some, some pretty nice chunky wiring to be honest compared to the other speakers anyway. Surprised by that, out they come. And they're also wrapped in polystyrene, which is good. And there we have it. So we have this, which is instructions before mounting. And if you wanna read this, hit pause now. Got a warranty, won't need that. And finally, the speakers. And that fell on my toe. And that is what these look like with a grill on. And with the grill off. And a little bit more of a close up. This voice coil is a little smaller than the previous speakers was, but that is also understandable because this can only handle half, less than half the amount of power than the previous speakers could. Also, this cone is made of a different material, feels like paper. So let's have a bit of a close up of that. You can see the texture in this surround right here. Now what we'll do is we'll put these into their boxes. Before I do that though, this looks like a pretty good thumbnail, doesn't it? Also, I forgot to show you the back of this. Check it out then, look at that magnet. That looks absolutely immense. I have no idea how they managed to fit that on there, but they have. It's a work of art. So far though, I think these are the only speakers to have copper tinsel leads and the tweeters are not connected directly to that cone. At first, I wasn't going to film this part of the video. I was going to take these out, replace them with the other ones and be done with it. But then I thought, you know what? I'm doing this. I'm watching it. You can watch it too. That wasn't too bad, was it? And out this comes and everything is still attached, as you can see. So far, I'm pretty sure that these speakers from the previous video are the best at handling a lot of power. But like I said, more tests will be done in the future when all these speakers have been tested, unboxed, unwrapped, then tested, etc. So uh, here we have another speaker that I've got to take out. So if you're new here, these connect to the terminals via crocodile clips. So they just go straight on there and they stay put, which is a great feature of crocodile clips. And uh, also crocodiles do the same thing. So if you get your arm trapped in a crocodile, it's um, not gonna be your arm anymore. Okay, so here goes speaker number one. And this goes onto here because that is the positive one. It's always the big one that's positive. That's just the way it is. And then this one here is negative, obviously. And this goes onto there. So these connect to there like that. And when you put them in the box, they stay put, which is really cool. Also, all the holes seem to match up on these six by nines, which is awesome. And they should because that's that's like a standard isn't it now i'm sure these are going to sound different to the speakers that we've tested already just how different though i'm not too sure i'm not going to pretend that i'm an expert and sort of predict the way i think they'll sound but i think they'll sound medium to good so the last speaker that i tested that had a paper cone was this thing right here and now we connect the second speaker. I could do this with subs. I could do this with a lot of speakers. If you have any ideas of what you'd like me to do with these speakers though, once I'm done with them, let me know if you want me to test certain things. And uh, if I'm able to do those things, if I have the tools, etc., I'll give it a go. Now, I'm not really expecting much from these speakers. I'm guessing they'll probably sound like very, um, let's just say my Iowa, somewhat similar to that, minus a bit of bass. <laughs> Okay, finally, now let's put these in their place and get to testing. So here we are, connected, ready and waiting for me to stop 
Talking bollocks. Okay, so the speakers are in their places, and first we'll start off with the stereo test. And I don't know why I do this every time, but I need to turn on the amp. And now we start. Left channel, left channel, left channel, right channel, right channel, right channel, left channel, left channel, left channel, right channel, right channel, right channel, left channel, left channel, left channel, right channel, right channel, right channel, left channel, left channel, left channel, right channel, right channel, right channel, left channel, left channel, left channel, right channel, right channel, right channel. Okay, so let's begin the music test and once again I'm playing this track so there's some consistency between these videos. You will be able to, if you wanna, refer to the previous videos and sort of listen to those speakers and see how they sound, compare them to these or any other speakers that I've tested with this song. So uh, here we go then. That was interesting. Now what I'll do is I'll play this track. This track I made specifically for this test. It was just something I threw together. There's a bit of a bass line, there's a saxophone. This track is not complete by the way. Maybe one day I'll give it a bit of a polish and put it onto my SoundCloud. So I'm gonna keep the camera centered right here because this is the middle of the speakers. That way you'll get a better sense of what the stereo field is like from these speakers. And here we go, starting off with the bass line. Okay, so here we are back at our original listening position. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna run a bit of a bass boost. I'll turn up the volume a bit, turn up the bass a bit, lower everything else that is not bass. And if you've seen the previous videos, you will know how I'm doing this. And if you wanna know how I'm doing this, watch one of the previous videos. Let's get on with this then. And I'm gonna play the same track I played first because consistency. I expected these to sound a little better than they did, which is usually why I don't have expectations. So now that I'm disappointed, I'm gonna turn up the volume on these as well as a bass boost, and we're gonna see if we can smell anything. Well, you won't be able to smell anything, but I will. And I'm also gonna play that same song that was just playing. I'm going mainstream.
Kind of surprised at that. Took a bit of time, but I started smelling it in the end. It's actually kind of a weird smell too. It almost smells like a hospital. Right at the end there, they did a bit better than I was expecting them to. Yeah, you're supposed to break in speakers because that loosens them up and stuff. But maybe I will later on if it still matters when I do the other tests, etc. So there's a couple more speakers left to test. But after I've tested all of these, if you want me to do something with them, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can do them. If I have the tools, etc. We'll see where these tests take us. So until then, I will see you in the next one.